In this lesson, we're going to talk about the various kinds of splines that are supported in a Libre Sketch Mode, how to edit them and create them, and what they're used for. Let's first take a look at what a spline looks like. We'll just quickly create one here on the screen, and we can see that it, the geometry flows smoothly through the points, right? Splines are used to create these nice kind of bended shapes that are smooth transitions between things, and this is useful for things like boat creation, uh, airfoils, furniture, tons of applications. There are three kinds of splines that you can create in a Libre Design. The spline menu here reveals them. Uh, the first one is going to be a spline. It's actually a spline by reference points. And then you have a spline by control points and a spline by interpolation points. This one is kind of unique, and these two uh, are in the same category, right? So we create and edit the regular spline using one set of techniques, and we create and edit uh, these two guys using a different set of techniques. So let's talk about the first one. Regular spline, I just create points and the object uh, that is resulting flows through each point. Unlike the other splines, I can move these points in real time. They can be resized if the geometry they're attached to moves. Um, and all of that is kind of nice and handy. If you don't need that much mathematical control over what you're making. Um, and oftentimes this tool is perfectly good enough. So the way you create that spline is you go to the spline, you create some points, uh, and then you double click to end and you're done. Uh, you edit that spline by just left clicking on any node and dragging that around. Now a different kind of spline is going to be spline by control points. And this spline will create, we need at least uh, three things to create the spline here. Um, the spline in a little bit of a different way. So you can see that the spline is not going through the points that we've selected. Rather, it's kind of being drawn towards them. So if we double left click to end this spline, we can see that we don't get all these interior points, right? Uh, we have very few options on how we can move this object. As, at this point in time, it's considered a single kind of a solid object. It's, it's not editable, it's not draggable like this one is. Um, and you can move the endpoints around, but that's about it. And the way that you would edit this, which is different than the regular spline, is you go to the move control points or the move curve points tools. So let's start with move control points. We'll left click to select the spline as a target. And now we can see we get those same control points that were available earlier. We can move them around as we like. And when we're done, um, we just select another tool. Now, if we wanted to get a little bit more mathematically rigorous on what we're doing, we can select the Move Curve Points tool. We'll select our spline. And here we can see that we have a few curve points that have been created automatically. And we can select each one and we can modify the magnitude and the angle uh, to suit whatever we need. We can press OK. And now that is done. There are cases where those two particular points may not be enough. And so you can insert knots. And inserting knots lets you, um, first you select the target spline. And then we can see, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but I left click there and maybe I'll add one here and maybe here. And you can see we, we get these little, these little X's. So when we're done, if we go back into edit mode with either uh, move control points or move curve points, we select our spline. Now we have access to all of these little guys uh, instead of just the original ones that were created. Likewise, maybe I have too many of these little points and it's making the modification difficult. I can remove knots in the same way. Uh, I just select the spline and we remove all of the redundant knots, uh, things that are not really contributing to the shape um, such that we have an optimal number. Now this spline by control points um, is a little bit different than the spline by interpolation points, but editing them is exactly the same. So let's create a spline by interpolation. And this is similar to the regular spline, right? We can see that the spline is going directly through each of the points that we select. I can double click to end. And then to modify this, it's the same as the spline by control points. I can move the control points, move the curve points. I can uh, insert knots uh, or remove knots from a spline by interpolation. So these two work in the exact same way, but just created a little differently. 
And this guy, regular spline tool, works in a totally separate way. And it's probably the easiest spline to get into uh, if you're first starting out.